A three-time USSR chess champion Leonid Stein was among the world's top 10 players of 1960s. He was a highly intuitive, creative player and was considered an attacking genius. In the following games that made him famous in the whole world, 25-year-old Stein demonstrated his imagination and attacking potential at its best. While his opponent Nikolai Krogius was about to get a strategically winning position, Stein unexpectedly sacrificed a pawn and started a vicious attack. A pawn sacrifice was followed by a purely intuitive peace sacrifice, thanks to which Stein increased the pressure and eventually found a brilliant queen sacrifice, after which Krogius's position collapsed. Krogius started with d4 and Stein played his favorite king's Indian defense. e4, short castle, bishop e2, d6, knight f3, e5, d5. So white is playing the Petrasian variation. White is going to play bishop g5, pinning the knight, followed by knight d2. And in order to prevent bishop g5, Stein made a dubious move, h6 which weakens the king's side. Instead of this, the more natural move would have been a5, in order to ensure the c5 square for the knight. So the knight will move on c5, and the purpose of a5 is take under control the b4 square, so that white doesn't push the knight away. And it turns out that bishop g5 isn't that dangerous, because black can simply play h6, followed by g5. However, Stein played h6, and he had his point. He vacated the h7 square for the knight, so Stein is going to play knight h7, and after that, of course, the typical king's Indian pawn advance, f5, followed by f4, g5, g4, and the attack on the king's side. In order to punish black for a dubious h6, one of the uh, possible variations would have been h3, and after knight h7, black is ready to play f5, however, White has a strong move, g4, taking under control the f5 square. The only way for black to get some counterplay would be still f5, but after this, g takes f, as you see, the g file opens, and after g takes f, e takes f, bishop takes f5, bishop e3, so knight a6, queen d2, so as you see, white increases the pressure, is attacking h6, and after queen f6, long castle, white would simply play rook g1 and start very unpleasant attack on the king side. Besides that, white gets the control over the blockading e4 square. But instead of all this, instead of h3, Krogius simply castled king side. Stein plays in accordance with his plan, knight h7, knight e1, so the knight is heading to d3. White is going to play on the queen side, of course, as usual, while black is playing on the king side. Knight d7, knight d3, f5, f3, f4, b4, rook f7. So Stein's idea is to play bishop f8. The bishop from f8 would defend the d6 pawn, and also after bishop f8, g7 square would be vacated for the rook. And after rook g7, the rook from g7 would support the pawn advance. And now we can also see the idea behind knight h7. After g5, g4, the knight would be able to jump on g5 and increase the pressure on the king side. c5, knight f6, c6, b takes, d takes, and now, as you see, the d5 square is vacated, and uh, white can get the control over this square. That's why bishop e6. But b5, vacating the b4 square for the second knight, and the knight from b4 will also take under control the d5 square. Bishop f8, knight b4. So everything is ready now for white to play knight b4, no, d5. After which, uh, white's position would be very good, maybe even strategically winning. Black's position would be critical after this, because the bishop on f8 would be very bad, the pawn uh, would be blockaded, and as you see, white has a pawn majority on the queen side, three pawns against the two pawns, and after this, white will simply start the advance of the pawns, play bishop c4, exchange the light square bishop to, and uh, black's position would simply be critical. And in order to prevent all this, Stein sacrifices a pawn. d5, opening his dark squared bishop's diagonal with tempo, attacking the knight. And the bishop, of course, will move to c5 with check. Knight takes d5, bishop c5 check, king h1. 
However, black doesn't have any um, immediate threats. So, yeah, the bishop is actively placed on c5, but uh, white is a pawn up, and white controls the crucial d5 square. But Stein continues his attack. Knight h5, opening the queen's diagonal. Black is threatening to play queen h4, followed by simply knight g3 checkmate. That's why Krogius plays queen e1, in order to take under control the h4 square. But still knight h3 g3 check. After the pawn sacrifice, Stein sacrifices a piece in order to open the h-file. As you see, the king doesn't have any moves. g1 square is under the bishop's control. And Krogius accepts this sacrifice too. Because there is no checkmate at the moment. So black still hasn't created any um, Im immediate threats. So the sacrifice was purely intuitive. There is no queen h4 checkmate. But the queen invades. Queen g5. Now black is threatening queen h5 checkmate. That's why Krogius plays g4. Now both squares h5 and h4 are inaccessible for the black queen. But h5 threatening to capture on g4, open the h file, after which queen h6 checkmate would follow. Uh, so that's why Krogius plays g3, vacating the g2 square for his king. h takes g, and again now a deadly uh, check is threatened, queen h6 check, followed by queen h3 checkmate, that's why king g2. And now the only piece which isn't developed is developed by Stein. Rook f8, creating a very strong pressure on the f file. So if black manages to capture on g3, the f file would open with great effect. Both rooks will exert very strong pressure. However, at the moment it is impossible because there is a very unpleasant x-ray, so black cannot capture on g3. Bishop d2, but Stein found a way to solve this problem. Queen h6. So Stein is going to move away from the bishop's diagonal and create a threat. f takes g, opening the f file. And he does it with tempo, because after queen h6, he is threatening queen h3 checkmate. That's why Krogius plays rook h1, attacking the queen. And queen g7. And now black is threatening simply f takes g. That's why Krogius himself captures on f4 in order to keep the f file closed. e takes f. Rook d1 and now g5. So Stein is simply threatening to capture on f3. And after the bishop captures, play g4. After which the pawns on g4 and f4 would be connected past pawns supported by the rooks and the queen and these pawns on g4 and f4 would simply smash everything on their way. That's why Krogius found a very interesting resource. e5. And Stein captures on e5 and now we can see the idea. f takes g and it turns out that f3 check doesn't work because of simply bishop takes f3 and the black queen is under attack. So, in this case, black would be forced to exchange the queens, and after this, white is simply winning, because after rook takes f3, rook takes e6, rook f2 check, king h1, rook f3, but white has a very strong move, bishop e3, closing the bishop's diagonal, after which uh, black doesn't have any um, attack and any serious threats, so white is simply winning, but... Instead of f3, Stein found a brilliant move. You can pause the video and find it. So, after sacrificing a pawn and a knight, Stein sacrifices his queen. Queen takes e2, check. So, white can capture the queen either with a knight or with a queen. So, in case knight takes e2, Black, so, so the knight moved from uh, c3, from which it defended the knight on d5. So, of course, black would have captured the knight in this case with tempo. Check. Now, if king moves to h3, then simply knight f6, threatening deadly rook h7. 
That's why after bishop takes d5, check, king uh, would move to f1, but now the rook is unguarded, so simply bishop takes h1. For the queen, black has a rook and a bishop, and very active pieces, a, past, a dangerous passed pawn, while black, white pieces are cramped and very passive. So black in this case would be better. That's why after queen takes e2 check, Krogius captured on e2 with a queen. But this isn't better either. Because of f3 check and a fork. So white is losing the queen. Queen takes f3, rook takes f3, and here Krogius made his final mistake after which his position became hopeless. He could still have uh, held as a position by playing bishop e1 because black is threatening deadly rook f2 check so after bishop e1 white would have uh, got the control over f2 square and black would have captured on g4 in this position black would have had a slight advantage but white still could have continued the resistance but uh, krogius collapsed and under the great intolerable pressure created by Stein, so currently rook f2 check is threatened. So Krogius, in order to prevent this check, played rook f1. But this move is losing on the spot. So of course Stein captures on g4. Now rook takes f3 of course doesn't work because of bishop takes f3 check and white is losing the exchange. That's why knight e4 attacking the bishop. <clears throat> but simply Bishop h3, check, and after king h2, rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes f1, knight takes c5, rook f2, check, king g1, rook takes d2, so the bishop is under attack, but black is attacking the knight, so knight takes c7, white still uh, continues the resistance, white has some hopes, because his opponent c6 simply needs two moves to promote to queen, but bishop h3, of course, a4, Rook g2 check. Now, if king moves to f1, then it falls under the discovered check. That's why the king must move to the corner. But now Stein creates checkmating threats. Knight f6, a5, knight g4, threatening knight f2 checkmate. And after knight e4, taking under control the f2 square, simply rook e2, attacking the knight, and which is much more important, threatening checkmate on e1 because the knight and the bishop control all the squares and the king will simply be checkmated that's why in this position Krogius resigned and now i recommend watching another brilliant game by stein in which he demonstrated his creativity and basically finished the game on move 11 but first don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe as it's really helpful for the channel growth